They can be edgy, they can be elegant, big or small, American or British, named after celebrities or even made by them. Purses and handbags are a favorite of fashionistas, so desirable that not even a price tag of several thousand euros would be a deterrent. We have regular customers. Some of them even stick to just one label. Believe it or not, they come in every other month or so to buy the latest bag from their favorite label. Or they buy a second or even third bag they particularly love in another color. We see a lot of that. Every day, 180,000 people visit the luxury Kaufhaus des Westens department store in Berlin. One of the most popular departments is called The Loft, a treasure trove of purses, shoes and accessories that opened last year to cater to the growing demand. So what is it about handbags that makes shoppers' hearts race? I guess one factor is that purses, like shoes, have nothing to do with your figure. You can buy whatever you like without having to worry about the size. The media is also fueling the trend. Every season, fashion bibles like Vogue promote the new it bags, a term coined in the 90s for a designer handbag that becomes a must-have. Among the first it bags were Fendi's Baguette and the Louis Vuitton Speedy both available in limited editions. While a man might splash out on a watch, a woman is more likely to splash out on a handbag. It's a treat. A handbag is an investment, one that its owner can really show off with. They're often worn very ostentatiously so that everyone sees them. They're status symbols. The Bavarian National Museum in Munich is currently hosting an exhibition about the history of the handbag called Taschen. These elaborately embroidered 16th century purses were among the first bags worn as accessories rather than hidden inside the folds of clothes. Documenting over 500 years of handbags, the show is packing in the crowds and has already been extended. Interestingly, it shows that handbags have never been predominantly functional. Across the centuries, they've always been a personal statement. The point of a handbag was to have a place to store personal items when you are out and about. That's why it's always been a very individualistic accessory. Also on display in Munich are some of the world's best-known handbags. Chanel unveiled its 255 in 1955 and it remains a bestseller. Equally iconic is the Kelly bag, launched by French luxury brand MS and named after actress Grace Kelly. It costs at least 5,000 euros and anyone who wants one has to add their name to a waiting list. And that's apparently not just an advertising gimmick. First, there aren't many people who know how to make these bags. The other factor is the material. The more exclusive and exotic the leather, the less of it is available. That's why you have to wait a while if you order a Crocodile Kelly bag. A handbag speaks volumes about its owner's taste and style. But why is the men's handbag never really caught on? The point when they started getting fancy, like the ones you see here, and became fashion accessories for women, was the point when men stopped wearing them. Before that, they'd worn very elaborate hunting bags, but they'd fallen out of fashion by the 19th century. Later, they had briefcases or wallets they kept in their pocket. But in the course of the 19th century, bags became very much a woman's accessory. And a pricey purse isn't necessarily just an indulgence. Some designer handbags could be a real investment, as long as they're properly looked after. <laughs>